I tell you more and more. I tell you more and more. I'm becoming more and more fond of the little girl dog. She has so much energy. I think maybe that's one of the things that helps me out with getting to like her a little bit more. Is as I'm decrepit and going downhill, and I'm I'm more you know I don't know what you would call it. I'm like uh, sedated. I don't have, I'm low energy. She comes over and I can almost borrow and get some bounciancy from her energy. And so I just, I just love this year coming. Plus, me and the little girl dog, we're starting to get a little bit closer now. The funny thing is she kind of, we were sleeping together. You know how dogs love to sleep, you know, in the calm of the, of an end of a day situation where we're both, you know, been wearing, getting worn out and doing lots of good fun dog stuff. Then you sleep, you know, nuzzle up next to each other, you know, just for the warmth and the camaraderie and the, whatever, the communion. Well, this little girl dog, she, her, her, uh, right up there by her thorax, it kind of rested against my collar. And she was having a weirdo dream in which she thought she was some kind of a princess. And, but yet she was, uh, you know, she was some kind of a princess, but yet she was in charge of keeping up with all of these mice. And the thing that was weird is the little girl dog says, don't put the mice in it. That's the only thing I heard her say. She goes, don't put the mice in the snake thing. You know, and I thought she meant you know, like a snake aquarium or snake, whatever they call those reptilian kind of cages where they all gather in there and they throw a bunch of little live mice in there. The little girl dog was having a bad dream and about, you know, why she would do that, I don't know, about mice and snakes and everything. But in the dream, she was saying, Whatever you do, ah, don't put those mice in. I can't take it. I don't want to hear, you know. And that's what I heard the little girl dog say. Don't, don't, don't put the little... But, uh, you know, so that was a weird thing. So it's proven the little girl dog will be able to talk. I think, you know, the more she finds out that this is a possibility, the more she's going to be wanting to get my collar, you know. And I, I hear, as I say some things, like if I say something to the little girl dog, I see Madame Yes gets all huffy a little bit, you know. She gets a little, her hackles get up a little bit because she's like, I'm not, she doesn't like it when the man's dog, myself, orders her little girl dog around. She gets like, a, I don't know what you call, like defensive. Like I shouldn't be telling the little girl dog anything. And I think what Madam Yes, uh, she'll lean in and whisper to the man. And I think what she's saying is that she's wanting the little girl dog to have access to the collar. And I think she's wanting the little girl dog to order me around. I'm not really ordering her around. I'm telling her, you know, hey, you can't scrape up the furniture. You can't crap over here. You're shedding everywhere. You know, I'm telling her, hey, lay down. Be, be a little more calm. And every time, Madam Yes, she looks at me. She looks, she looks sternly, like her eyes are squinty. Plus, Madam, Madam Yes's eyes are always kind of slitty anyway. Like she's like a pothead or something, or she's you know on opium. She just has little slits for eyes. Very sexy, but she picks that head up a little bit, and I can see her nostrils, and I can see those slits are kind of like focusing on me. And she, I can tell she's thinking, we gotta get the little girl dog her own collar, and let's see what happens then. You know, it's a little bit of a what do you call it? It's competitive. It's competitive in this living room, in the parlor room sometimes. But that's how it always was with these wealthy people and these these crazy hobnobbers. They're always at each other. They're always snipping. They're always backbiting. They're always you know testing. That's that's what makes them elites, because they're fighters. They're always you know in a competition with everything. So, but now I see the man. I think that's what the man and madam yes seeing each other. Besides their love of bourbon and their love of dogs. They love to be in a constant tension with each other, snipping at each other and trying to put each other down and one-up each other. It's kind of like the elitist thing to do. That's how the elites do when they hang out together. But anyways, that little girl dog, she had that dream and her, her, her thorax was right against my collar and she starts speaking, a little girl dog, you know, voice talking something weird about it being in a reptilian museum and they were going to feed the mice and she was heartbroken about it. There was something weird about the whole thing. I don't even know why she's having these kind of dreams. I haven't seen a mouse, you know, since you know, for a while, you know, the cat keeps the mice cleaned up around here. But anyways, you know, I'm getting more and more attached to that little girl dog and I, to the point where we're even like scuzzling up together, sleeping close together. And I'm just, I look forward to her. When I know she's coming over, I kind of, you know, when she comes in and she wags her tail and she says hello to me, it builds me up. It makes me feel like a million dollars. It makes me so happy. I'm like, oh, I get to see the little girl dog and my energy perks up. You know, my tail's wagging. That's how I knew. Back at the beginning, when all of a sudden the little girl dog started to win me over a little bit, I, I would say, oh my God, my tail's wagging. I see the little girl dog and Madame Yes coming. I'm like, oh brother, here they come. And then my tail would be, my tail would be wagging. My tail was trying to tell me, oh, you like the little girl dog. And hey, lo and behold, it turns out I'm really starting to like the little girl dog.